Hello everyone, welcome back. This is a new lecture in your course, Mastering Docker by Edionix. My name is Ahmed, and in this section we are discussing Docker containers. Now, in the previous lecture we have seen how Docker uses the restart mechanism in order to recover from different failures or different conditions that may cause a container to shut down or to exit abnormally. Now, let's have another more elegant method to recover from that sort of failure. Now we have mentioned before that in Linux and Unix, the process model starts with the very first process or the PID1, which is called the init process or sometimes called the upstart process. This is the parent process of all other processes on the system. This is the process that is responsible for starting all other processes that gets booted automatically by the system when it first boots. Okay, This process also has another function besides launching processes which is that it monitors those processes and if one of those processes failed or exited it will restart it again. Sometimes it's called respawning a process. Respawning means that the process get, gets restarted after it exits. Okay, So the init process here sometimes is called a process manager. Process manager refers to a process that manages other processes. It monitors those processes for failure or abnormal shutdown and when that happens it restarts those processes again to ensure that they are always running and to minimize the downtime to the minimum. This model is also used inside Docker containers. You can have a process manager or an init process inside your container and this process will be used to, to both start and monitor any child processes on the container and when one of those processes shut down this init process or this process manager will be used to start it again. To see an example of this we will download or we will run a publicly available image called fusion slash base image. Okay, this is just an Ubuntu image that is publicly available uh, from a company called Fusion. This is using an init process to manage other processes on, this, on the container and when one of those processes exit, it will restart it again. So let's see how that happens. Let's say the name is base image. Say the name is init example. Okay, and we are gonna run it of course in the background. And let's see. Now well, we have a we have a container running in the background. Let's use docker exit command to have a look at the processes that are running on this system. So init example my ps minus pf. Okay. And those are the processes running on the system. As you can see here, we have the first PID here, or the first process, the parent process here is 1. And this is a Python process. It uses a Python process called my underscore init. And this process is the parent of all other processes on this system. And it also monitors those processes for any failures to restart it. So let's see how this happens. Before that, let's have a look at docker logs init example to see the logs. And that will become important in a moment. Let's have a look here at the last line of the logs. It says that syslog-ng starting up. Syslog is a daemon used in Linux for managing system logs and application logs. It is a daemon running in the background and it is started by the init process. Now let's see what happens if I attempted to kill that process. Let's have a look at the process ID. Here we have syslog-ng. It's having a process ID of 12. So I'm going to kill this process. Okay. Now let's have a look at Docker logs and an example. And as you can see here, another line has been added to the log of the, the machine, which says that syslog-ng starting up. As you can see here, the last line in the previous logs before I killed the process was syslog-ng starting up. Now we have syslog ng starting up again. That is because I have attempted to kill it using kill minus line command, and the init process has restarted that process again. So let's see that one third time. Let's clear the screen, and again, let's have a look at the process ID. This time it's taking the process ID of 27, and I'm going to use the kill command again to kill that process, kill process number 27. And if you have a look at the logs, you'll see that there is a third line in the output of the logs stating that syslog ng starting up again. This is because the init process is doing its job. It is restarting the process whenever it is killed. 
and that of course will ensure that your processes will be running in a smooth state. Of course you can combine the NF process with some sort of logging or it may for example send you an email alert if that happens in order to be alerted that some of your processes have shut down to try to investigate and troubleshoot the cause of this problem so that it doesn't happen again. But at least the process will restart and it will keep on restarting until the root cause of its failure is found and is mitigated. And that brings us to the end of this lecture. My name is Ahmed Forijanix and see you next.